Hey, so big disco. It's been recovered in. Uh, two recovery drivers actually. Well, one uh, A guy said it was seized, had no oil in it. Needs an engine, just condemned straight away. Without hearing it running. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So they put the booster on it, obviously, and it went clunk. Look at that. So then it was recovered back to the lady's house and they checked it the next day and they said, no, there is oil in it. There's not much in it. I've confirmed that. It's just right on the bottom of the stick. Um, so it is right low. So uh, the second recovery driver come. I did want it on the lift, to be honest with you, but oh, I'll not argue with the guy. So I'll get, I'll get the world's strongest man, my brother, to help me move it when I need to, to be honest with you. So at the minute, I've checked and the engine does turn, right? So... I know it's not seized, what I need to do is my father's coming later on to drop some tools in here I need to check that when it is turning It looks like it has turned because I can see a black dot on there So we need to check that the actual camshaft's up here, which the engine's all turning So it does have right on the first dot if you like So right on the first dot, so there's not much in it uh, Bit of mission to get the battery, the battery's stone dead, eh? So we'll go back to that. So then the second recovery driver that brought it here, he says, aye, mate, you can smell it. I says, right. I says, what can you smell? Oh, oil. I says, right, okay, this has probably been getting hot. I uh, don't know what's wrong with it yet. I says, again, well, no condemn the engine. He says, nah, mate, I put the booster pack on it and it still went clunk. I says, your booster pack is probably not good enough, even if it's fully charged, to start this car when it's got a flat battery. So I put the booster pack on it. His booster pack didn't even have enough juice in it to put the handbrake off. Right, I put the window down, but it didn't do nothing, nothing else, eh? So we charged up a battery, got the handbrake off, right? And that's what happens with batteries once they're so flat, but, eh? When it was rolling off the truck, either we lost connection, the dash lights went down, but thankfully, we should know that battery. Sorry, thankfully, the handbrake had stayed off. So we managed to get it to move. So... You can see what we need to do, we've taken all the plastic off there, I've taken a couple of foamy bits of our shopping trolley It's getting a few Land Rover bits in it now So I've checked the oil, um, I can see down there, down at the timing case and I phoned Gem Ford before just to see what, where the oil could have went to He says, timing casing, he says there's a wee bung in there He says they can leak, that might be leaking right, but for the oil that we've lost I don't think that's where it's came from because it's uh, well, you've seen it, it's right down the minimum. So anyway, we'll go underneath. Uh, it's not a ramp, so I'm lying on my my floor mat here. So I popped the cover down. Oh, there's my ratchet falling off. Right, and the sump plug is run about here, obviously. That's the cover for draining oil, so it's no far away from there. And I can see that in there. It's dry anyway there. So, and the sump plug is still in it. My ratchet has fallen off. I will pause here. Right, the ratchet is back on, hopefully it doesn't fall off, right? And I can turn the engine. Right, so I'm moving the engine, right? So I did, you seen that it's falling off again. But, but, and now it's inside the cover now, so... Let's see if I can fish it back out. Right, so you can see, it's not a massive ratchet, right? So, I don't deem that engine to be seized. However, there's obviously something wrong. But yeah, I'm turning that. Well, actually, what I could maybe do... Pause. Right, so if it'll focus, but we might be able to see... There you go, that's a bit better. Right, so I'll go and turn this down here. And I'll take back my own recording. Right, so I'll pause here and I'll go and look back. There's nearly this will be my next go to. Something's at some point anyway got oil in there. I love this. <laughs> that's it, that's how it goes. That's it, I'll just sit there. That's all it holds uh. Crazy. But it's a land of what? Sit. See 
Oj, 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 So, continue, look. Hey, so one service no showed up, so we send all that service kit back. So, I've started stripping this to see where the oil has vent. And I can see, right, there's oil in there. In the turbo. And I've seen quite a few of this engine uh, with turbos away. So, it's really... Uh, the impeller's away over here, so I need to try and get a mirror. Something to see if the impeller's still intact and if it turns. Right, it's very hard to see into it, but I think... <laughs> I think that's a skew. So, let's see if we can get a pick or something to try and get in because obviously I'm only a wee guy and you really see if that is moving about in there. Obviously, my screen, my camera's not correct, right? it's the, the bit of mirror that we're using. It's correct, I know it's really bad luck, but. These things happen. Well, currently we're a wee late nana. Shouldn't put your shoes up on my table. Bad luck. Shouldn't walk under a ladder. Bad luck. That's really difficult to see. Oh, aye, that's not good. Don't even need to see it, we can hear it. The tub was collapsed. It must have made some sort of noise. Surely. Right, so. Jeez. Jesus Christ. That is one of the worst ones I've seen. Let's see if we can get this in. So this part here is an impeller, you can just about see it moving. And you go over here as well. Let's see if I can work this up to get a better view on that. I can get lots of light. Right, let's see if you guys can see. Oh, oh come on. Come on. Sail that up there, yeah, I had a good view on it. <laughs> oh, it's difficult. Difficult, so I've got one in the port of the turbo. And I'll just put one there. That's really difficult to get, I think. Put my hand in the wood anyway. Trying upside down, see if this will work. Right, so I've got my pick in. I right, shouldn't do that. It's knackered, so. Obviously, once we strip it all off, you'll be able to see how much shrapnel and bits have come off this. Hopefully it's no damaged engine. So I'll pause here a second, right? So we know that engine turns, right? We know that engine the engine turns. We know why it had no power. Now the turbo's collapsed on itself. Um now I'll, I'll show you a turbo which how it's meant to be. Right, so this is a big huge Garrett turbo, right? 
and you can see there's no play in the shaft, doesn't move back or forward or side to side, that one's completely collapsed. This is the exhaust side we're looking at, we've still to see uh, the exhaust side on that car. Um, so obviously we're into the intake, which is this side, and we can see the impeller is definitely off. So that is definitely 100% knackered. Why? Don't know. Um, the oil, that's where it is, right? So that's where the oils went. So that shaft has collapsed. Um, and we can see actually, if the torch, I think the torch has went flat actually on the phone. But in there, well, it's probably run away now to be honest with you. But there was a load of oil in there. No. So it's probably time to take this off and see how much is in there. That will need to come off as well. That uh, my cooler and. Charge cooler, you see how many coolers on it. Uh, that's my burnt cool charge cooler combined. Uh, so, see if I can get this boost hose off it. So, that's the joy of working in Land Rovers, right? So, we're just going to do a wee video for people that don't know how to get them into neutral when the batteries went dead, right? Because that's what the guy couldn't do. So, you need to remove your airbox, right? I'll get to that in a minute, right? We need to remove said airbox, right? And if you see there, there's a lever with a pin in it, right? So, you see I've got that inner cooler hose off as well. Nothing to do what you're talking about right now, just talking about the neutral. So you move that lever over so you can get a pin in it, and then that's you in neutral, right? This one we had to put jump leads and all that on it to get the handbrake off, because it was so dead. Jesus man, tiny wee cut, eh? Going like the clappers. Hey, so we've got a big disco sport, we've put the battery back in. Um, so we've charged the battery overnight, the size of the battery is huge, right? And, Range Rovers, Land Rovers in general, very finicky to on the battery. Um, you get diagonal machine on, the battery drops down to 12 volts. It does not like that, and it tells you, boom, put the battery charger on there. You're not getting any further access to me without a good battery. So you need to basically work on them with the battery charger connected to them. So we've charged that one fully. Obviously, we've seen that turbo's completely collapsed in there. So I'm going to run it. I've removed the boost hose, which has all oil as well. Right, so there's all been oil going through there as well. And I mean, you will get some oil going through there with turbos, but I'd imagine that's going to have some oil in it. So, I mean, with the turbo going like that as well, uh, the worry is, is that shrapnel for that no has getting into the oil system. Um, so, it's probably, if it does run okay, and it sounds okay at the moment, we'll probably need to take a sump off this car as well and check for debris in there. Even then, once you put a new turbo and oil filter on that, I've had engines before where you, you know, I had one where the, there was shrapnel trap between the oil filter housing and the turbo feed pipe, um, and put a new turbo on it, it destroyed the new turbo. Um, you know, if the customer hadn't noticed the noise, um, then it would have been even worse and it would have been an engine. Um, thankfully that was not the case when we managed to get the, the, the van back in, it was a van, that one I think. Um, and, you know, Stripped it all down, couldn't find any reason for it, couldn't find anything that the mechanic had did to it. Um, this was in here, you know, so it wasn't the mechanic's fault. Um, however, I decided, you know, I just I thought it was going to be something, so I took a, an airline, compressed the airline, and I actually found out where it was blocked um, and managed to unblock it, thankfully, and then put a new turbo on it, it was fine. However, you know, the damage can be done when this was driving down the motorway, so we need to. Listen to the engine and just hopefully it sounds okay. So we're going to add some oil in and see how much it takes. Right, thankfully we do have some, right, so you can see there. Verified by Dragon Land Rover to meet this requirement of ST Gen, eh, Jaguar Land Rover basically. So we shall put this, it's almost a litre, right, just above the 750ml and we'll see where the stick goes to then. Right, I'll let that oil settle and then I'll check the dipstick and see what it is. Then we'll put the oil on it, scan it and uh, we'll take it there basically, then we'll try and start it and uh, see what happens. Right, so something new on the Land Rovers. So this is the 2019 uh, Discovery Sport. So DOIP. Do IP has the characteristics of more system coverage and higher diagnostic communication efficiency. Two, it's recommended to choose DOIP protocol first and adopt CAN protocol only after Dope protocol connection feels so we'll do it as it says. I mean, can is something I'm very familiar with and I'm trained with. Dope, uh, I've not even heard of that. I mean, I left the dealer uh, probably 2019 actually, 2019, 2020 opened here. 
um, sorry, so 2020, and you know, uh, probably the last manufacturer training I did, maybe 2017, uh, and I've never heard the type, <laughs> but Mitsubishi, old school, <laughs> so, maybe, we'll see, I'm not sure what not scanned, blue is not scanned, so maybe we'll need to go back, oh no, here we go, <laughs> here's all your low voltages, <laughs> Um, sorry. Right, so 71 fault codes. Jesus, I'll pause here and have a scan for it. Right, so engine. Right, this is power control module. Nox, it does have a message on the dash for the, the death fluid uh, to be topped up, so you add blue. Engine failed to start, component or system operation obstructed or blocked. That's a permanent fault. Engine failed to start, no operation, permanent. Intake air, air temp is unplugged to get into the, the gearbox, so that gearbox is out of there. Turbocharger under boost is what I was expecting, right? Mass of volume air, I was expecting that also because the turbo is no longer sucking in any air from there. So he's went, wait a minute, I had a, a, a load of air getting drawn and now I have nothing. DPF, pressure sensor circuit range performance, it's a history code. Um, again, exhaust code. A heated oxygen sensor could be oil down there. Somebody just now made its way to the back of the exhaust jet, the oil. Um, once we get the turbo off it, we will be able to see. Now, the rest of these part neutral switch, transmission processor, watchdog <laughs> safety, microcontroller fault, uh, transfer case, gear in or NP indicator circuit actuator slipping. So that's us putting the thing into a uh, part. And the rest of these lost communication, lost communication, lost communication will all be your battery. So I'm going to pause here, I'll save all this and I'll, I'll keep a copy of it. I mean, really the only two that we know of is basically the engine, eh, sorry, turbo charger, right, under boost, we know that, because it's failed, the turbo, um, and we know why the massive volume is there, because it's no sucking in here. Although I've just put more oil into it, uh, we'll see where it's at now actually, so I've just put more oil into it, because I do want to uh, try and run it at least, just to keep it running. So that was maybe about 500 mils again, it's Evo 20, it is a different brand, but it is Jaguar Land Rover stuff. So we'll see where that's at now. Oh yeah, that's much better. So I'm saying maybe about a litre and a half it's lost then. So there's a litre and a half to answer for somewhere. That obviously is for part of the turbo. I'll leave that off as well at the minute. Just put it down here. Um, we will go and try and run it in a little minute. Um, clear the fault codes out it once I've saved them. And then we'll try and start it. Right, rear view mirror module, that's the only one that didn't clear, so I've kept a copy of the, the report. See what happens if we try and start this. Right, so she's in P for back. Oh. Oh. Okay, Right, I'm going to need another man here. To see that it is just clunking. Yeah, I can turn the engine behind. It does just sound like the start was interesting. Right, well, it's probably because that intake air temp's off, but obviously you've seen that, it wouldn't start. So I need to speak to the customer now and see, you know, whether they repeatedly try to start it or is it calling over and calling over. Yeah, because we've got a fully charged battery now. And it still doesn't want to turn over, but I can turn the engine with that ratchet. So... I'm not sure of yet. It's not to say it isn't knackered, right? It's not to say it's not knackered, but I can turn it behind, so it's definitely interesting.